Welcome, welcome. Today we have this amazing episode. We're going to be talking about breast health and thermography. If you are a female or if you know someone that's having trouble with breasts, everybody needs to listen to this podcast, but especially if you have been struggling with breast health, make sure that you watch all the way to the end because we're going to be talking about what is thermography and we're going to be talking about also sharing a lot of tips of things that you can do at home to prevent and improve the health of your breasts. Then all the women need to be listening to this podcast. Make sure that when you finish listening, share it with your best friend because she also needed to listen. And welcome to Be Healthy Podcast, the best way to discover practical tips and holistic health information from amazing wellness expert and even real people with incredible health journey stories to inspire you to become the best version of yourself. Hi, I'm Anna Marino, a self-healing specialist, a physical therapist, a best-selling author, and a public speaker. I healed myself before and I know you have the power to heal yourself too. And today, we will talk with Gay Walden. She is amazing. She has so much experience. She's a medical thermographer and a holistic health coach. She was certified as a holistic health coach in 2009. And in 2012, she officially opened her holistic breast health in Charlotte, North Carolina, and dedicated to educating and empowering and supporting women for good breast health. Holistic Breast Health offers breast thermography, a safe radiation-free screening that gives women a risk assessment and encourages them to take charge of their breast health and their overall health. And Gail, thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome. It's wonderful to be with you, Anna. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, and let's kind of start with what is thermography? I think a lot of people never even heard about that before. And let's kind of start with that before we kind of go deeper into the breast part. Of course, most women have not heard about thermography. It's used very little medically. It's underused medically. It should be used more often in the medical field. And uh, most people, when they hear about thermography, they think of breast thermography because medically it's used more for breasts than any other part of the body because it, it takes a very sophisticated thermal camera, which I own, uh, that measures heat on the surface of the tissue of the, of the body. The breasts have thin skin. So we're able to pick up so much uh, with the thin skin of the breast tissue. Uh, when I say that, we can pick up lymphatic activity and we can put, pick up vascularity, both of which which enter into breast health. So it's a very good screening for the breast and it is radiation free, as you mentioned, that attracts a lot of women mm -hmm. because they are thinking more and more about cumulative radiation that they're getting in the environment. And so this is safe, no compression. And, and unlike the other screenings, mammography, ultrasound, MRI, it cannot detect disease. It measures and heat. It measures heat. We're picking up areas of inflammation on the breast tissue. And if there's anything significant, of course, it draws attention to that breast and that area of the breast. And what women don't know, Anna, is when we find something like that in the thermal image, we can decrease that inflammation, just like we can decrease inflammation anywhere on the body. And this is my passion and what I've been doing for the past 10 years in the Charlotte area is giving women this forecast. It's like a forecast. Things are looking good or you've got some work to be done. And the imaging helps us define and really get detailed about any and all areas that are showing significant heat, which is indicative. If it's not infection or trauma, then we're picking up inflammation. And there's no question we can uh, decrease inflammation in the body anywhere, and we can decrease inflammation in the breast. So this screening is for women who want this forecast. They want to know the health of their breasts, first of all. 
But most importantly, they want to know the things they can do if things are not going in the right direction, and they're willing to make the changes and take the proactive steps that are going to take them down a healthier path with their breast health. Mm, I love that. That is so important. I think a lot of my listeners are probably going to love the idea that there is other options and they we can actually look at things even before it starts developing. That's like so important for preventive health as well. Exactly. I just want to do a full disclosure because I know you kind of mentioned to that, but I wanted to just clarify and reinforce that this is a complementary exam that does not substitute, does not diagnose anything that's important for people to also understand that. The, just to clarify something else that you're saying there, um, as far as the picture, do you use an infrared camera? Is that? Yes. Infrared camera. And one thing it's I want. It's a thermal camera. Thermal camera. Thermal camera, not right. an infrared. Well, it, it, it's based on heat it right. detects heat on the surface so it's, it's a thermal camera is the correct but distinction perfect then the, the woman comes to you and then it will take a picture of their body and they use the thermal camera to diagnose is one thing i wanted to explain to the listeners if you've never heard that term before is the idea of the body temperature changing depending on how much inflammation we have then that's already being validated science proved that's nothing new in it, every area of our body has a certain te temperature that's normal. Some areas are a little colder than others. But when we start to see a spike on temperature in certain areas, even as a physical therapist, I can feel that through my hand. If someone have a shoulder problem or when I'm doing visceral manipulation, we can kind of feel some areas being a little hotter than others. And that's a sign of inflammation. It doesn't mean inflammation doesn't mean disease. Inflammation doesn't mean a problem. Inflammation just means that things are not moving the way they're supposed to be. And then there is room for improvement. Then that's that's a really good news. We can actually see that. And the pictures are amazing. Um, you can actually see the difference of one side or the the breast, the upper part, lower part. That's that gives a lot of more detailed information with the, the camera. That's kind of fascinating. And, you know, seeing the images will help a lot. And yeah. I will I will just hold up this one image that yes. you and I talked about using, if if they can see this. This is a little higher, Gay. Okay. Is that good? Perfect. Can, can you see it? Um, bring a little bit more to the left side. I think the, the, the light is... Is that left? That yeah, right? that's good. Uh-huh. That good. I want to show this because this is the front image uh, uh, of a woman. And her particular image here is what we're looking for as far as a thermal image. We want to see symmetry. We use the colors of the rainbow to identify heat patterns. And we want to see symmetry in the cooler colors in the breast. That's reflective of good breast health. So using that scale is easy to use to identify any specific areas of heat within the breast. And you're right. Inflammation is not disease, but if inflammation is left intact and it's not reduced anywhere on the body, it may lead to disease. And this is how it's a preventive approach for women to take with their breast health. Mm -hmm. This is a ideal thermal image. I have only maybe five of those in the 10 years that I've been doing this. Wow. So, but, but it's our goal to have better symmetry and that's reflective of coolness in each breast with no specific areas showing up in the imaging that need attention. Mm. These are few and far between. Everyone walking, every woman walking is an average risk for breast cancer, every woman. And we want them, you know, to, to, to get even a lower risk, right? So if we come up with an average risk rating and this, there is a risk assessment involved with this screening, and we have criteria to assess risk, but just say you are a three in the assessment on each breast. If that is stable over time, Anna, that's a good risk rating, but you still have room for improvement with a three. So we want every woman to be below average risk so mm -hmm. she can hold her head high, knowing that she's doing everything she can possibly do to keep this part of her health good. And that's what this is about. Mm. What what's a three represents? Let us know a little three bit. Three is an average risk rating. Average risk. What would be the 
the highest yeah. number in the lower. Four and five means, and the risk is one to five, the scale. Mm -hmm. And if there's a four and five, that means we found something. Mm -hmm. Does it mean we because we found some heat, significant heat in the breast, does it mean that's disease? No, not necessarily. But let's say a woman feels something in the area where we picked up this heat. Cysts show up as heat. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the, it's disease already. Mm -hmm. It mean a cyst. That's why, like you said, we have to fully disclose that this does not replace any of the other screenings that are available to women. Because if we, if a person comes in, they feel something in the breast, there's some heat that's associated with it. Just for peace of mind, a woman may choose to correlate this screening with one of the other um, screenings that are available to them. And I don't say anything about that because it's also peace of mind because I can't tell her it's a benign cyst. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, I can only tell her we've got some inflammation where that cyst is located. And that cyst, it, you can make that cyst go away and you can make that inflammation go away. And that's, again, what this is all about. That is fantastic news because I think a lot of people are so afraid because I think when we think about that part of our body, most most female, at least most females that I work with, I feel like we are so disconnected from our femininity. We're so disconnected from our body, especially the feminine organs, then it's it's part of us and we need to be able to connect to that. It's really important. Well, it defines us as a female. Exactly. <laughs> so you and I are on the same page there, Ani, you know. So, yes, uh, I really uh, am so encouraged by the number of women who are using this in conjunction with the others. You see, it can help a woman decide if she wants to do another screening or not. And when that magical age of 40 comes around and your doctor says it's time for your first mammogram, she can decide on her own whether or not this is right for her. If she's been doing thermography before that time, and it, she should, and the thermogram is a good thermogram, but she's been taking all these good steps and she's made it a habit, all these things that she's doing, then she can decide, no, I'm not going to do it now. And it will help her make the decision about when or if she will ever do that screening at all. I mean, that's her choice. Our culture promotes at the age of 40 still, a woman needs to go in for her annual mammogram. Um, many women are rethinking that because of the radiation. Mm -hmm. There's no question about that. And it's not one mammogram in, in her lifetime that she should be concerned about. It's the numerous mammograms that a woman is suggested and recommended to have over her lifetime. And I think it kind of reminds me like a lot of times when like you go to see other healthcare providers, like I see that a lot of chiropractor and dentists where right. like a lot of times we use images as the gold standard and that's all what it is. And yes, but... I, I was, I'm a big believer that we need to see the patient before we see the image. I don't request any images when I'm working with my patients for physical therapy before I see the patient and before it's been absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. I think we do as a society as a whole, we needed to be rethinking the amount of radiation that we put in our body with like dentists or a chiropractor or some other x-rays. That's right. Things they are not necessary. It's cumulative. Exactly. Right. It is a cumulative effect. Then, and in looking like, I love what you're saying there, is a complementary exam. It adds the pieces of the information. That's what I tell my patients all the time. Mm -hmm. that when you come, I'm going to check your posture. I want to check how you're walking. I want to check if you have x-ray, brings the image. But the images, the MRI, the x-ray, the ultrasound, whatever images we have in our life, mm -hmm. it's going to complement everything else that we have. Then I think it's really important when we're looking from the holistic point of view to remember that. I agree with you 100%. And the doctor who trained me, he reinforced this in me so long ago. He said, all the screenings have a purpose. Exactly. They all are looking for something differently. And in an ideal world, we would be allowed to have all of them mm -hmm. to give us the most knowledge that we possibly can so we can make our decisions about what to do. 
Mammography is being rethought by most women, because, not just because of the radiation, but the younger women, let's say even 40 is, is young, in my opinion, but, you know, uh, she may have dense breast tissue, which 50% of all women have dense breast tissue, which does not allow the mammogram to, the X, in the x-ray, dense breast tissue shows up white, and what they're looking for is white. So women have to know if they are deemed with dense breast tissue. The only way to determine your density on it is to have a mammogram. You can't really tell by feeling, but what it means is the woman has more fibrous, glandular tissue, less fat. It shows up white in an x-ray. And what they're looking for in the mammogram, which is an x-ray, is something white. So women have to think about that when they have dense breast tissue. But tell us a little bit more about the pros and cons of the thermography versus other other tests. Well, obviously, uh, they, uh, mammography, ultrasound, MRI are all promoted to diagnose. They are called diagnosed, diagnostic screenings, correct? Mm -hmm. In reality, you know, the only thing that really diagnoses is a biopsy in the breast world. Okay. Definitely with the thermogram, we can't diagnose this is risk assessment. You'll be given a risk assessment based on what we see, the health of your breast. And if that risk assessment is ab above average, I try to incent and educate women to do the things they need to do to reverse this. So we get it to a three and ultimately below average, again, using it this way. But let's let's say that, you know, she has, uh, and I mentioned this before, she has a, an average to below average risk rating. And that will help her decide, well, maybe I don't want a mammogram this year, or maybe I don't want to do it ever. I mean, it's her choice. We have to be in charge of our own bodies mm -hmm. and make our own decisions based on all of these screenings probably coming into play to make her make the best decision for herself. I have many women leave thermography, leave after doing this, and if they're high risk, they're going to do a mammogram, ultrasound, or MRI. And that is clearly on every report that I generate that this is an option for them. Again, in an ideal world, we would have all of access to all of them. But if she does want to do an ultrasound and not a mammogram, in the conventional world, that is not possible. She has to have the mammogram before she has the ultrasound. Oh, wow. Not paid for by insurance unless you have a mammogram. The ultrasound isn't and they won't allow you to have an ultrasound unless you've had a mammogram first so that is pretty much the rule all over the country not just in north carolina for example there are some states connecticut being one of them that allows a woman to have an ultrasound if she is breast ultrasound if she is deemed to have dense breast and insurance covers it hmm. because there was one mad woman in connecticut who found out about this breast density issue after the fact, after she had a normal mammogram, did not know her density, did not check with another, you know, have another screening. And when she did, she would, it led to a diagnosis of breast cancer. And she got angry and said, I, yeah, this should be a law that, you know, if you have dense breast, you are allowed to have a, an ultrasound without having a mammogram. In that state, women can do that mm. and uh so and and sh this is spread somewhat in other states around the nation as well this lady uh set up a, a nonprofit, and it's called are you dense mm. and it educates the public and women particularly about this most important breast density issue that really factors into breast health and uh, this is an issue that's going to continue to to go on and I think more and more states uh, will enact laws that will make it possible for women with dense breasts who don't want a lot of mammograms to have an ultrasound. That's the way it should be because it should be her choice. Mm -hmm. uh, so stay tuned on that issue, but it's not going away. It's a very important issue in breast health. Mm. It's 50% of all women have dense breast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, again, going back to that, that power that we have as a female, also remember, talk to your doctor, ask questions, call right. your insurance, clarify, like do your research. 
Correct. Like make the decision together with your doctor. Like bring those questions to your doctor to make that final decision with your doctor. That's really important for us to have it works with someone that you can trust, work with someone that's going to listen to you, that you're going to feel heard, you're going to feel validated, and is going to be able to answer those questions for you. Because I think those are really valid points, like really valid questions. And respect your your feelings about these, you know, that's very important that you get that respect for mm-hmm. determining on your own what's what you feel is best for you. Yeah. It's, it's a partnership with a healthcare provider, mm-hmm. but a partner you want someone who's going to support you, right? not be your adversary in, in what you feel your body needs. Yeah. Is there any contraindication Gay, uh, for the thermography? Not at all. Not at all. Fantastic. Not, not. Is there an age? Is there like a, like started at what age is the, you, we usually recommend women to start doing the thermography? Well, the, the average age for the women who are coming to me now, Anna, is right around right before 40, maybe 35 to 50, I would say, mm-hmm. the majority of women. The younger a woman does this, the more she has to gain. Mm-hmm. I have imaged uh, daughters of some of my older clients who are in their 20s. Oh, wow. and you would think that a 20-year-old would have a, a really good thermogram, but we live in a different world today. The environment is so toxic things are much different now that younger women are are being affected by this unhealthy lifestyle in general, right? Uh, and they have the most to gain if they start this early and we see that things are not going in the right direction, let's say a 20-year-old, start her on the right path now with healthy habits. So it, going forward, she doesn't get to that magical age of 40 and maybe things have, have even changed more in a direction that we don't want. So true. I think that's such a valid point. Since there is no contraindication, there is no side effect for it. Just give you some inf- extra information. The soon we start getting some he- like good information, the soon we can start making those changes. And of course, the younger we are, the quicker the body heal, the quicker the body recover, and the less problem in the future we're gonna have. And that makes totally sense. Yes, that's that's correct. And that's interesting because I feel like a lot of women, they don't even think about those kind of problems or the breast health or or feminine health in general until they start getting to menopause. And it's kind of late. Like we wanted to like 35 before 40 already start having those uh, awareness to what we can do. Then when we get to menopause, it's easier Correct. We don't want to wait and she will like, now we have like all this problem. Now the body have to work so much harder to heal. If we slowly start to making this change, changing our habits, making improvements towards our health, especially when you have the information about the risk, risk assessment that you, now you know your risk. When you know your risk, you got to do something about it. You got to think, make that commitment. Well, we're hopeful that that would be the case. It's a good incentive. Yes. Right. When a woman gets to the menopausal ages, um, if if she has not lived a healthy lifestyle up in that up to that point, it menopause is going to be challenging. Whereas if she has set good habits before that age, then she's going to go through menopause as many women have done over the ages very easily. Because years ago, women went through this change so easily. We, you know, it was. It was something they knew was coming. They, they they handle it emotionally well. I think today it's a different it's a different animal, and women do get to that menopausal time, perimenopausal, and between the stress and the unhealthy environment, it, it makes it challenging for her to go through something that is totally natural, and we're supposed to go to get, go through without challenges. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a transition in life, but. Um, it, it, it's totally different thing right now for women because again, our environment is so much more unhealthy, and um, it, it, it's, we need to incent women at an early age to take really good proactive steps with her health, so that she will benefit by going through menopause easily and having a quality life to the end, and that is all all any of us want. 
Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's important, like you say, it's part of transitions of life. We just have, we like, we become teenager. It's a part of transition. Like we go to mental right. different transition. Then if we keep our body strong, we can go through the transitions of life so much easier. It doesn't have to be a, a big deal. It can, it, we can go through that easier. Exactly. Another thing that comes to mind is sometimes some of my patients, um, we kind of talk about it is during your period because the breasts a lot of times people have a lot of swollen and painful and as far as i know that's not normal that you i would love to hear your opinion <laughs> on that well it, it, it is i guess it's become normal for a lot of people however it is reflective of hormonal imbalance because every month with women's cycles they go up and down and it's a very challenging thing on the body and before um, they start their periods, yes, women do complain of more soreness. If they have cysts in their breasts, they feel them more. This is very common. But again, if you can keep yourself healthy, you're uh, doing all the right things from a lifestyle standpoint, your hormones are going to be balanced in such a way that your symptoms like that are gonna be minimal and not going to affect the quality of your life. Some women who are really off balance as far as their hormones, imbalance rather, they're gonna have severe symptoms. It's gonna be worse for them. And there's so many symptoms of, of imbalance in hormones. And yes, estrogen is our friend in many ways, but in the stronger estrogens that our body produces, we need to make sure they are eliminated from the body and if the liver is doing its job of metabolizing estrogens, that's what will happen. But if the liver is not doing its job, and in general, your body's not detoxing from these strong estrogens that we produce, then they accumulate in the fat cells, right? And, and that's not a good thing. <laughs> Even though women can have small breasts, but they still have fat in the breast cells. So that's, you know, this, yeah, this is a big issue. Hormones are a big factor in breast health as hormones are a factor with, in general, with women's health. Yeah. And I talk about this with women. I'm not a hormone expert, mm -hmm. but I'm trying my best to educate women that they can get out of the state of what's called estrogen dominance, yeah. which a lot of women are in. That means relative to their estrogen level, which could be low. If her progesterone is even lower, she's in a state of estrogen dominance. Yeah. And guess what reduces the production of progesterone? Stress. Mm -hmm. You're producing cortisol and adrenaline, and you're not producing the right amount of progesterone to off balance the estrogen. And that is not a state that women need to be in on a steady basis because it is a risk factor, this yeah. hormone imbalance. Absolutely. We actually had a great episode. If you guys are listening to this and you want to learn more about hormones, we had an episode with Dr. Ina uh, about perimenopause. And we have an episode with Dr. Matthews about menopause. They're both really good going deeper into the hormones. Then if you want to, after you finish to the end, listen to the, <laughs> where the tips coming up. Go ahead and listen to the other ones about the hormones, because I think it adds a lot of extra information to what we are talking about today. Correct. Fantastic. And I think I love what you say there. I think again, it's in holistic health, the difference between normal and common. Common is something that becomes like so common. Everybody has, everybody mentioned, everybody complaining about it. And that's not normal. Right. But I that's think it's right. important for the female to start to, to realize, okay, if you're having symptoms, is this a normal symptoms or it's a common symptoms? Then if you are having swollen and severe soreness, I think it's, and correct me if I'm wrong, because you're the expert on the breast thing, but uh, I think swelling up a little bit just because of the, the circulation and the blood, it's, a, it's normal. Mm -hmm. Having soreness and having pain and a lot of swallow, it's not normal. Yes, extreme. The extreme. The extreme symptoms and heavy, heavy bleeding to the point of passing out, I've heard of women doing that. That is in, in migraines. There's so many different symptoms that can affect the quality of your life if your hormones are not balanced. Yeah. So you're absolutely right. Minor symptoms women can get through. 
uh, the, you know, it, you know, the day before your cycle, it's going to happen, but then you start your cycle and things mm -hmm. you know, balance out and you don't have those symptoms anymore. Yeah. It's when they become debilitating that a woman needs to address these symptoms. Yeah. Sure. And now I'll, I'll put a parenthesis of the word debilitating because I have a lot of patients out there. The debilitating is when they can get out of bed. That's not debilitating. Debilitating <laughs> means it's above average. It's like I right. have something is one thing, but when you start feeling like more severe symptoms and it's not severe to the point that you need to go to the doctor, it's severe to like, mm, that doesn't just listen to your body. Like it doesn't feel normal. It's probably not normal. And Correct. like That's you mentioned, a good way to describe it. Right. And you mentioned also the, the thermography as far as the symmetry. Like if you have one breast swell and get a lot more soreness than the other, that's not normal. No. If, yes. Every woman has different size breasts. Mm -hmm. You're not given perfect size breasts. And if that's always been the case since she's developed breasts, it's, it's her normal. Yeah. But let's just say a breast starts swelling, look, gets larger, like overnight, you know, that's that's not a, a good sign that has that needs to be addressed yeah and i know that you're going to be asking me about some proactive steps yes, let's... in a situation like that this is a good segue isn't it yes let's <laughs> move on let's flip the page a little bit <laughs> let's talk about solutions then hopefully by now everybody's clear it starts doing your um I, do, I want for you to also talk about people like doing their the self check as well because I think that's a big piece and I think a lot of people skip that. But can you just give a little bit of that and then we're gonna go the segue for the what can we do about it? Right. Well, every woman should be examining her breast at the doctor's office, especially the GYNs. They're normally with an annual physical are going to give you a breast exam. But primary care doctors and other doctors are not required to give a woman a physical breast exam. That is not good. And if she's not examining them and the doctor doesn't examine them, then the, then the, the, the breasts are not being touched at all as a body part. And Dr. Wren, who trained me, he says, Gay, the hands-off approach to women's breast health is not working for them. So literally, we want women to be in better touch with how the tissue feels be educated on how to what to look for, not just a swollen breast if it's if that, that happens overnight kind of thing. There are other Indian things that she needs to be educated to look for. But I, I, you know, a lot of times the breast swells because there's lymphatic congestion. Mm -hmm. and, and that's that's what we're you know, that's one of the well, it is the number one thing when a woman comes to me, I don't care what her risk assessment is that I'm encouraging her to learn how to do, because as you know, and, uh, and and some people are becoming more aware, the lymphatic system is very, very important for health, the health of the body. And it's very, very important for the health of the breast, because nine times out of 10 in the thermal imaging, what we're picking up is lymphatic congestion that's led to a little area that's become warmer. And mm -hmm. when she learns how to do the lymphatic work herself, a self-massage, guess what? those areas start cooling down, indicative of the inflammation cooling down yep. and representing healthier breasts. This is so simple, but something that's not encouraged in our culture. And when a woman comes to see me, she's not gonna leave here without knowing that there's a resource to even teach her how to do it hands-on, I have resources, mm -hmm. or she could follow the diagram or a diagram to sh show her how to do this properly when she's in the shower and that kind of thing. So this is extremely important. If you get nothing out of this podcast, even if you just have to search your own for a, a self, a diagram of how to do a self massage, there is one on my website. It comes from the doctor who trained me. He's been promoting it for years. So women need to get in touch. They need to feel good about what's in their tissue. And how do you know if things change if you don't know how it feels now? Exactly. You have to have that base. This is how the tissue feels. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a little thickening here. It showed up in the thermogram. I'm working it. And when she comes back to do another image, some more imaging, we see that it's different and she doesn't feel it anymore. That is prevention. Yeah. Because over time, if an area assists, for example, gets warmer and warmer and warmer, right? 
it doesn't resolve, that tissue is negatively affected to the point where it, this inflammation is so great that something could actually form. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to prevent. Beautiful. It's interesting because a lot of patients that I work with come with like neck pain or TMJ or shoulder pain. And I always go through the lymphatic area, like under the axilla. That's why we have a lot of lymphatic here. Exactly. We also have a lot of lymphatic on this triangle, the outlet triangle here. Uh -huh. the, if we have any neck pain, shoulder pain, thoracic, TMJ, usually people have trouble with their lymphatic as well. And it, it becomes a cycle, right? And it's like a lot of times I'm working with patients and I'm releasing some of those areas. And then people look at me like, because I, I, sometimes I'm working around this area here to the side. It's not even close to the breast, but people are just like, oh, what you doing? And it's like, it's part of your body. <laughs> I know. Well, you're right. This is where the lymph nodes are located. Like, yeah, we have the rib cage, we have the lungs, we have the lymphatic on the axle. I think we need to be more in contact with our body as well. And go to the breast too, because things need to move. And we need to... I've seen more... More inflammation or extra heat right here on these upper quadrants coming out from yes. the lymph nodes. This is where I always see heat. Yes. And the, the best part is sometimes they don't tell me that they have soreness or pain on their breasts. And then when we loosen up that area, we, we release the lymphatic. They, like the next session, they come back, hey, Anna, my breast pain is gone. And they never even told me that they had a problem because I didn't think that was related, right? But it, but it is all connected. Yes. And I think it's so important to recognize the, the breast and the body, the posture, the alignment, the lymphatic circulation, the rib cage movement, like everything right. Very is important. connected. And as we're moving towards preventive and treatment, I think it's so important to make sure that we keep our chest moving. We keep the, the shoulder. A lot of people are so rounded and it's constricting all the circulation going to the axilla and, and the, the heart as well. Then keeping that posture, keeping things open on the area, keep stretching, like do whatever kind of stretch, yoga, stretch, whatever it is, but just keep moving. And, and I think for, as far as if we're looking from a female part, it's also connecting to our feminine energy, like connecting to ourself, connecting to our feminine energy, the nurturing, the, the breast is literally the nurturing part of us, the, the energy of nurturing, that the more we connect with ourselves, the more we feel ourselves and we allow ourselves to have that, the better we're going to have our health as well. That's my piece there. I Oh, I absolutely agree. And you know, you and I have talked about how important structure is with breast health, because all of that you're discussing can impact the imaging. If there is structural issues that you've described just now involved, she needs to address that because the rib cage, particularly if it's stuck in any way, shape or form, it is negatively impacting lymphatic flow in the breast tissue. There's a direct correlation. So um, that's why, you know, we take a whole body approach to this. It's not just some specific things that are, you know, you, you've come to mind like bra wearing, which we haven't talked about yet. But, you know, people should know by now, or women should be educated by now. I'm hopeful that most of them are, that wearing a bra with wires, for example, you know, it really negatively affects breast health because the wires are punching in this very sensitive area where the lymph nodes are. And right here, and I always see heat here when women wear these bras with wires or too tight bras. Sports bras sometimes, uh, they're good for exercise, but they're not the kind of bras that we should live in because normally they're too tight, causing restriction, and again, negatively impacting lymphatic flow. So th these are just common tips that I give women. Most women who come to see me, if they're wearing a bra with wires on the day of imaging, they're walking out my door and going right home and taking the wires out or not wearing those bras again because I highly encourage it for breast health. Yes. And even if we go deeper into the holistic, how much does it affect our rib cage and how much that affects our lungs? It actually 
constricted our expansion of our lungs and that means oxygen that means health right that's like exactly absolutely exactly. i am 100 in agreement and i tell my patients all the time it's like find something that's comfortable do what you need to do to support if you have a dance and bigger of course bits. i'm not saying women should not wear bras it's just yeah. for everyday bra wearing mm -hmm. wear the most comfortable bra you can Bye. to allow some movement of the breast tissue exactly that's all we're talking about absolutely and i would add as an extra tip if you don't have to if you're home you don't need to wear for sleeping exactly. right exactly. take it away like give give a little a little space for the circulation to move if you have to do all day long at least give a little break whenever you can i think that's i absolutely agree with you on that and the bras with wires can should be reserved only for a special occasion when you need the look for an outfit yeah. i do i do tell women that Don't throw them all away. Just don't wear them every day. Make it special occasion. Yeah, it's kind of high heels. Like, it's not the ideal. Right. Exactly. Don't so wear high heels high every day. At a wedding, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> you may go need to see a physical therapist sooner than later if you can wear it every day. Uh, you have obviously. to be realistic about looking good. And looking good is feeling good. Exactly. I'm definitely on that page because every woman wants to look good because when she does, she feels good. Exactly. And that's great. It's a big part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay. Then we talk about posture. Yeah. We talk about the bra, the type of bra, find something comfortable. What are other tips that you have for our listeners? Well, for any woman who's wearing an antiperspirant, I would urge her to find a natural deodorant that works. The only reason we need deodorant is to not smell. We want to perspire. An antiperspirant does not allow you to perspire and release toxins. And so where are those toxins going? Mm -hmm. They're going right into the breast tissue area. So finding a natural deodorant that prevents odor is what I encourage women to do. Highly recommend that. And Gay, do you have a suggestion? Well, a lot of women tell me about this, um, the crystal that you'll find, a natural deodorant crystal. Okay. Um, uh, you know, some people use baking soda. Okay. Uh, Some people use essential oils. You know, there are natural ways. You just have to find out what works for you and prevents odor. Now, if you do not smell yourself at all when you perspire, don't wear anything. <laughs> That solves the issue. And I do have women who say, I don't wear anything because I don't, I don't smell. Yeah. So we just don't want to offend somebody, but we do want to perspire. Because yeah. it's a major detox system, as you know, and we have to keep our major detox systems working efficiently and effectively to remove the toxins that we're exposed to in our environment. Absolutely. It's Especially so cool. close to the lymphatic and, the, and the, we definitely this area here, we got to be extra yeah. careful. In general, what we put on our skin Mm -hmm. It's really important, but especially when it's it's completely blocking the perspiration. I think that's a really good important. But we've really talked about movement, uh, which is critical movement of the breast and movement in general. And you know what we see in these thermal images of the breast are sometimes or a lot most of the time a reflection of overall health. So if you're not, food is the foundation. So mm -hmm. if someone is not eating. Clean food, when I say clean food, that means not genetically modified, organic, the cleanest you can get, then obviously what's going through that lymph system that gets clogged so easily. So I have seen before and after, and I can show you before and after images of a woman who fairly is eating fairly healthy, like, but she says, we're not picky about organic. I remember this one woman early on came said, we plant-based, whole food, but we're not picky about organic. 18 months later, uh, she came back to re-image and the, the thermogram was even so much better. She had a pretty good one the first time, but it was even better. And I said, well, what have you changed? We went all organic. Wow. And this, these are before, this before and after image I show frequently in my slide presentation because We cannot underestimate the value of eating good, clean food. That is so critical. 
Mm. And I had another lady come earlier this week, the same thing. Her husband had to go on a strict way of eating. They, t- they took out all the, in- an- the inflammatory foods because they're both eating this way. And her thermogram, I, that's the only thing she said, I'm right with my husband about how we eat. And, you know, the thermogram shows it. It's amazing. So food is the foundation for health. And it's, we can clearly see in the images when someone eats cleaner. Mm. It's so powerful, isn't it? It is. It is. I think that's like, it's such a good visual feedback also for a lot of women, especially when you don't have a lot of connection with your body. Hopefully you're working on that and you get more connected to your body that you can feel the difference. But I think for a lot of women, just having that visual feedback to like, wow, there are things a little clogged here. Oh, there is room for improvement. And then afterwards doing again and be like wow that is a lot better it's making a difference because i think sometimes we we do those things for health and and if you're not aware of your body how much better you feel that is that question like is that really helping and when you start seeing that on the image it's like it's a no-brainer of course it's helping right that's that you you've got thermography just the way we see what it is now we take action and we see hopefully that it's improved. And if it is improved, she keeps on doing what she's doing and maybe add on some more things and then it's only gonna get better or it will get stable and we won't see any difference. Whenever she does image in her thermogram, it'll be stable and good. And and and, and this is what this is about. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Then I wanna add another tip because I teach that to my patients a lot, lymphatic, like how you do a lymphatic massage um, then I would recommend to do the whole body. I would love to hear from you about the breast because when you improve the whole body, it's kind of like if you have a hose and mm-hmm. you have one area block, right? We want to clear the whole hose and then that area is going to unblock a lot easier. Then it will right. affect everything else. And I usually just tell patients like from the face, it goes to the ear, mm-hmm. to the ear, it goes down to the heart. Right. And if from the extremity, it goes down to the heart. Mm-hmm. And with the lymphatic, when you're doing at home, um, if you are a member of the academy, our academy, we, I have a video there showing you how to do the lymphatic. And I also have a video to do how to, how to do the face lymphatic. They're a little bit different. Um, but overall, you want to make sure that the pressure is a little bit deeper than skin level. You don't want to just rub the skin because it doesn't get as deep to the lymphatic system. You want to go a little bit deeper and then you can do, I love doing the massage when you're taking a shower. You can get a really nice oil that you like it. And then you just get your whole body moving the lymphatic. It's going to make a huge difference on your health in general. And then when you go to some of the areas that have a lot of lymph nodes, like for example, the axilla, you can do a little pumping movement there. Just again, just to stimulate that liquid to keep moving. Then that was more about the breast part. Well, yeah, again, you know, what you're saying is you, know, you, you need to keep the whole lymphatic system moving, the whole body lymphatic mm-hmm. system. And, and th- those techniques that you described are excellent. I obviously recommend either a rebounder, which allows for lymphatic movement, and also something called a vibration plate, both of which really do move the whole overall lymphatic system. My desk chair is a bouncy chair, so if I'm sitting here too long, Look what I'm doing. I'm moving up and down, and that that really helps with moving the lymphatic system mm. in the breast as well. Any kind of up and down movement is obviously going to move the breast tissue. But the, the self-massage is, is somewhat different, but the, the pressure you're describing is what Dr. Wren describes the pressure for a breast self-massage. Mm. It's gently deep. Exactly. Gently deep. Gently deep is that. And, and, and the, the, the diagram, like I said, that's on my website, it has arrows pointing in the direction you need to be doing this. But virtually, you're going to treat the breast as a clock or spokes of a wheel. And you're going to go around, like with the left breast, you use the right hand, and it's going to be gently deep at 12 o'clock. And then you're going to go all around the spokes of the wheel or the clock. And two times on each spot, do this from the nipple. And when you get underneath, you're going to re- raise it and do like this. And then lastly, but most importantly, you're going to sweep everything towards the heart. And that is the, uh, without showing you the diagram, which mm-hmm. I hope people will go and try to access it. 
and learn from the diagram. But we have in Charlotte, North Carolina, several lymphatic, breast lymphatic therapists now. Mm, fantastic. Women who specialize specifically in breast lymphatics and offer other techniques that are going to help move the lymphatic system in the breast, including breast cupping. If you've ever heard of, I know you've heard of cupping, yeah. uh, but breast cupping, particularly is a stronger lymphatic mm. and it, it helps with circulation in the breast as well. We found a lot of uh, benefit when women uh, employ that technique as well, particularly if they're highly inflamed and they need more than what the regular massage may offer. Mm. So there, um, we're very fortunate in this city to have people who are trained in this. Especially. And these are people I've interfaced with over the 10 years I've been doing this, who make one person in particular made this a specialty within her practice mm -hmm. and she trained these others. So we're fortunate that we have women we can, I can send women to, to learn how to do this, to get a really thorough breast exam, to learn how to do the self massage and get acquainted with something like cupping to see if that's something that resonates with them. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, that all of these things work in improving breast health. Wonderful, wonderful. And we're going to make sure that we put that link going to your website and then people can see the, the graphic as well. Then we're going to put that on the show notes. Then if you are listening to that, make sure that you check the show notes to get all the links that we are making reference. Fantastic. Then is there anything else that you feel like it's really important for people to know that we didn't cover? Last but not so least. So Last good. but not least. You know, taking care of the physical body, we know, I think people who are interested in health know how to do that. You know, they do. Uh, whether or not they do it is a different thing, but they know what to do physically to improve the health of the body. Emotional, emotional has to be addressed with breast. Uh, I, I find a lot of women have to do everything right physically, but they're still showing things on the thermogram that we, we might be concerned about. That's when we dig deeper and when I mean deeper, if there's any kind of emotional issue she's not dealt with, if she does not address it, it is definitely going to continue to negatively impact every part of her body, including the breast. So that would be my last thing to share with the people listening to this, that you have to address your emotional health. If there's any trauma, anything you've not gotten out of your body emotionally, that if you don't, it's going to settle somewhere physically and manifest itself. And the breasts are a very vulnerable area for that. The right breast is associated with male relationships. The left breast, I think you and I talked about this, this is the heart. And women nurture, nurture, nurture others, but they don't always nurture themselves as much as they should. So that has to be the last word on breast health and the most important one. Totally, totally agree. <laughs> and I actually have a lot of patients that we work on that because, <clears throat> again, if you're looking from a posture point of view, um, point of view when, you, when you have emotions on the body, you have a, ten a tendency of tense the area. And it's very, very common when people are holding trauma in the tissue, and that's the heart, is the lungs, or the breast itself, you protect the area. Right. And once we started to open up and there's so many patients that I work with that come with neck pain, shoulder pain, like difficult time of like taking deeper breaths, feeling tired all the time, tired, tired and fatigue has a direct correlation with circulation and respiratory system. We're not going to go that today because that's a whole other podcast. But I have many patients that I don't even touch them with physical therapy. We just do the emotional release. We connect it to the body, go into the somatic, really feel, bring the awareness. And then when we started to release, their posture completely change. I wish I could take it like before and after pictures because they look taller, their shoulders back. And then you can see like some people feel like a little bit, even, even a little pink on their face because it's like so much like blood flowing on their body now. Right. Yes. This is like completely constricted and holding and protecting. I'm not safe. I'm not comfortable in my body. Emotional work. It's such a beautiful, important part of any healing journey. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important for, for especially for women because the breast cancer rate is getting so high. 
to start to go back and ask that question. How are you nurturing yourself? How yeah. are you practicing what you do for everybody else? Right. And and I, I totally agree with what you're saying about the feminine and masculine, the right, right. side mm-hmm. of the body is masculine. If you're having a lot of symptoms on your right side, you got to ask yourself, what's going on with that checklist to do type A personality, do, 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 do. And left side is a feminine, creativity, receiving. When was the last time you receive that you allow someone to support you? Correct. Then the left breast is most affected in thermal imaging. When there's an above average risk, it's normally the, the left breast. I have statistics on that. Mm. It's normally the left. It's uh, And I do believe because of this heart issue and the lack of enough nurturing of themselves that creates uh, the, the, the conditions in the left breast. It's probably a combination of things, but that is the emotional thing, the nurturing that we need to remind, remind every woman to take time for herself. I don't care what you do to nurture yourself. Anything that you can enjoy, do by yourself, get yourself, what you're doing for other people, do that for yourself. Mm -hmm. Do that because you're going to be a good, a a better caregiver to nurture others when you take care of yourself. That is just a fact. Absolutely, absolutely. I would just add one more thing to that because when we think about the sympathetic and parasympathetic, is stress management kind of goes on the same bucket mm-hmm. of emotional healing. It does. We need to focus on stress management because right. we don't get the parasympathetic, that's the relaxation, mm-hmm. digestion, and healing. If we don't get the parasympathetic system working, we are always on stress reaction, sympathetic, fight, flight, and freeze. Then everything gets compromised. And exactly. whatever protocol, whatever you've been doing for health, it needs to include that stress management component. And I think one other piece that comes to mind, because I work with a lot of patients that had like either recover from, from the breast cancer or they just got diagnosis, it's the fear fact. Yes, and I think we needed to really look at that from a different angle because fear creates stress. No doubt. We need to be aware. We need to be proactive. We need to do things. We need to follow your doctor instructions. But fear doesn't help. No. Then just starting to notice if you start catching yourself, you're listening to this and you, like just the word like triggers you or if you're feeling some traumatic response or happened in the past and now you're kind of living your life, wonder when it's going to happen again. That's trauma in the body and that needs to be addressed. I totally agree. And there's such fear around women's breast health. There's no question. And that's something we need to continue to work on with women. Anna, is to reduce that fear. And that's what I'm trying to do with my work is to empower them to know what the situation Mm -hmm. is so that hopefully they can reduce their fear and take control of this part of their health. And that's the flip side. That's what I love about this work is because when we think about self-healing, we think about empowerment. And how many things, and there are so much more. I'm sure we could be here for hours. I I could talk with you forever. It's Probably. so many things we can do. I love talking to you. I love talking with you too <laughs> because we're so simpatico, as they say, so aligned. And I think there's a growing number of women, yeah. hopefully the ones who are listening to this podcast, who are on this page because it's discussing these things that normally are not discussed about health is so valuable for us to change maybe the system that we have it that we have mm-hmm. that's based on medicine and not health. And it should be a system of health. Mm-hmm. It be treating each individual as an individual. Yes. It, 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 that's very important. Absolutely. I love it. Everything. <laughs> I hope you guys got a lot of notes because I got some notes myself. <laughs> well, uh, but we talk about so many good stuff here. We talk about to make sure that you add thermography as your risk factor. How mm-hmm. often would you recommend people to do thermography? Depending on what we see in the first set of images, the first thermogram, that determines really how often a woman needs to be doing it. If there's something she needs to be working on, I'm really encouraging her to take action, you know, and start doing these things right away. But you can't undo the things in the body overnight. So I never recommend, for example, three months following a thermogram because it's almost impossible to see a change even after three months. 
six months to a year if she's working on it. If someone is stable and just wants to keep in touch with her breast health, then yearly is a good idea. But I help guide her as to when I think it's good for her to come back, telling her always that unless she feels a difference in the tissue, see, I put that on her, then if she doesn't feel a difference in the tissue, don't come back to do the thermal imaging because we're probably going to see the same thing. But if she feels a difference, and the difference would be lighter, softer tissue that is reflective of improved breast health. And when she comes back after she feels this softening, then we normally see improvement, which is what we want to see. Perfect. I can't wait to work with my patient <laughs> with you because I have the feeling that we're going to be like three months. We're good. <laughs> so a lot of people want to come back in three months. And I can't say don't do it. Uh, it just depends on her depends individual, on individual and what we see and what she's going to do as to whether or not that's going to be necessary. But I have a service that allows her to take just a check, a thermo check, to see that if she's that she's going in the right direction, it's not as comprehensive as a fully interpreted thermogram, but gives her a visual and us a visual that things have changed, which is going to help her continue on this path you see, without without a doctor's interpretation, but the visuals sometimes tell it all, Anna. And that a lot of my repeat people who work a new plan or add something different will want to do a check to see if what they're doing is working. And I do offer that service as well. Perfect, perfect. If you're listening to this and you're in Charlotte, make sure that you call Gay because she is the best. And well, thank you, I take care of you. And thank for Every single woman, I highly recommend that get yourself checked because she has so much wisdom. I think we can all learn from her. Well, then make sure that you make an appointment. To we people. learn from each other. Absolutely. <laughs> now, go ahead. Holistic Breast Health is my company. And that is, uh, if you Google Holistic Breast Health, you're getting me. I'm first, so that's how to contact me. My, my phone number and my email, are, you can text Perfect. You can call, you can email. I, I respond to all methods of communication. Fantastic. And what's your website? It's holisticbreasthealth.org or .com. I have both domains. So when you put holistic breast health, it, it'll be me. Perfect. Okay, then guys, make sure that you write it down. I holistic will... breast health, because we do, I do take very much a holistic approach to this part of a woman's health, like you, Anna, in working with all of your patients. What you know, your knowledge is so vital, too, to helping women improve their health. I'm looking forward to working with you more and more. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I will add the link to the show notes. Then you guys make sure that you check the show notes for more details. And thank you so much, again for joining us today and sharing all this wisdom. We learned so much. We learned about movement. We talk about tips, things you can do at home, lymphatic do not worry, bro. Right. Watch what you're eating. We talk about emotional health. We went through a lot of different areas. And thank you so much for all the tips. We really appreciate that. Thank you. And there's more to learn always. And I'm happy to share more. When a woman comes here, she's going to get even more than what we've discussed briefly here. And because I treat, as you do, every woman as an individual who comes to me. So thank you for having me. Thank you. And Thank you, audience, for listening. Yes. Okay. Thank All you right. so much for listening to the ep to today's episode. If you enjoy, make sure you subscribe to our channel, leave us a review, and share our podcast with anyone that you know needs to improve their health. And if you are watching this on YouTube, hit the notification bell so you can get notified whenever we upload a new video. And if you're ready to reclaim your life and heal from chronic pain, join Be Health Academy. Be Health Academy is a science-based program that offers accountability, pain science education, stress management techniques, ways to shift the mindset, increase your body awareness, techniques to release the trauma from the body, and so much more. With the right resources, you have the ability to heal yourself. And you don't have to do it alone. Let me show you the way. Join Be Health Academy. And that's it for today. All right. Get up for the good work. I will talk to you later. And until then, 
be healthy.